Well, uh, we're back now. The French Football Federation, FFF, has paid the Super Falcons the sum of 40,000 euros ahead of a friendly match with the French women's national team on the 6th of next month in Le Mans. The Falcons will be expected to purchase their return tickets to the challenge match. It will be the first match for Falcon Suite. Uh, sweet coach Thomas Denabi and he has lined up his strongest team for the trip to Le Mans even though there are reports of several notable withdrawals. France will stage the next FIFA Women's World Cup in June 2019 and the Falcons game is part of their build-up for the championship. Now defender William Truce Ekon will remain a standing captain if midfielder Genio Nazi does not start for Nigeria in the friendly match against Serbia in London tonight. Substantive captain Mikhail, John Mikhail Obi is not available for the match due to work permit issues in China. Mikhail Obi missed the first friendly match where the Super Eagles defeated Poland 1-0 in Wroclaw last Friday following his inability to sort out the work permit problems. Mikhail Obi also captains Chinese Super League Sai Tianjin Teda. The midfielder took to Twitter to express his frustration but has urged his teammates to record another win as they continue their build-up towards Russia 2018. Tuesday's game will kick off at 8 p.m. Now, as part of the build-up to Nigeria's participation at the 2018 World Cup in Russia, a group of former internationals have embarked on a fundraising drive for the Super Eagles. The group, which has some since Yasia, Austin Eguavon and Waidi Akoni, uh, are looking to raise 1.2 billion naira for the Eagles campaign at the World Cup and has the support of the Federal Ministry of Sports. Now, Nigeria is expected to earn uh, $12.5 million from Russia 2018. The World Football Body FIFA has already released $2.5 million of this money as trading grants and the federal government has approved 2 billion naira for the Team. Now, the Nigeria Football Federation NFF has secured several sponsorship deals for the national team. The World Cup show attracts lots of money for the Eagles. Now, joining us from our Buja studio is former board member of the Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, Ahmed Shoaibu Garagombe. Glad to have you join us, Garagombe. Um, Garagombe, if you could hear me, glad to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, the, it's sure a great win for, for the Super Eagles this year. The federal government is giving so much money. The ex-internationals are raising so much money. The NFF is uh, going on a sponsorship drive, and corporate Nigeria is falling head over heel to be part of the World Cup drive. But then first, how would you rate, the, how would you rate Nigeria's preparation for the FIFA World Cup in Russia this year? It's just three months away. Yes, so far the preparation has been so good, uh, particularly with the international friendlies that the, uh, the Super Eagles are involved now, which one coming up this evening in London. Uh, that is one. Secondly, uh, for the very first time on paper, we have heard, we have listened, we have read for the very first time, so much money has come in to Nigerian football prior to the World Cup. What remains is what we are going to do with it, how we are going to spend it, and also the redemption process. Because many a times, corporate organizations, individuals make promises for sponsorship of our teams at the end of the day when they get the media exposure they need, they retreat, and you never hear about it. So it is either those who made those promises don't redeem their pledges, or, or those who receive the money don't tell Nigerians that they have received the money. Well, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. There's a lot to talk about that. Now, with victories over Argentina and Poland, um, do you think this team is good enough to reach the semi-final target set by the NFF? 
Well, I, I, I don't like to predict uh, events that are not within my control, but there is always an ambition. Of course, coaches, administrators, uh, supervising our football always set targets. But every time in the last four or five World Cups that Nigeria participated, there has always been a target. Some we achieve, some we don't. But setting targets to me is putting pressure on the coach and also on the players. When you prepare well, you do the right thing, get the right players, motivate them well, and support them. I don't think we need targets. We just go into the competition and do what we are supposed to do. And uh, that has been the case. So when you don't meet the targets, the next thing is that you are sacked. And that is why we have one of the highest turnover of coaches in our national teams today. So there is no need to be setting targets. And when we employ coaches for competitions, we can't go anywhere, we don't get what we want. But we employ, if we employ coaches for development, then we get what we want. We had a coach who came into this country, Westerhope, who had a plan, who had a program for almost four to five years program. And he has achieved what I do not think in history any coach of the national team has achieved so far with our national team. Well, so well, I when think we employ every coach and we employ him for the purpose of a I think that's um, arguable, Garagom, we get into that problem. Don't forget that whatever uh, he achieved, Stephen Keshi also did achieve. Uh, but then you know that Westerhoff took Nigeria to the first World Cup and we've been going ever since then, on, except in, 20, in 2006. But then so much money is coming in for the Super Eagles this time. Uh, $12.5 million is coming from FIFA. That's 4.5 billion Naira. If FIFA is giving Nigeria as much as 4.5 billion Naira, why should the FG, the federal government, is uh, budgeting $2 billion for this team as part of contribution to the campaign? What is that money for if FIFA is giving uh, $4.5 billion Naira? I understand that the Minister of Sports is asking the federal government to pay, or rather asking the federal government or Nigerians to cough out $3 billion for the World Cup. I think that is too much. The problem we always have is that whenever there is World Cup, millionaires are produced. Our budgeting system, our expenditure system, and even our accountability and transparency system in handling World Cup monies has always been faulty because people believe World Cup money are free money that you can spend without accounting for it. Now, with all these billions that is coming, are coming in from sponsors, which I said is quite unprecedented, how the present NFA leadership did it for me, it remains a miracle, but it's good for the system. It takes away pressure from the federal government in, or Nigerian taxpayers to put money into sports. Not only FIFA are giving the NFA money. Also, CAF are giving, for the first time, CAF are also giving money. Sponsors are everywhere. So why don't federal government, even if that money is approved, the federal government should freeze that money somewhere and put it as a kind of a, a reservoir and allow the NFA to spend what they have raised to redeem the pledges that they got and let's go and see if at any point they will need support from the federal government. But when you inject so much money into the system to go to World Cup, that is where you create problems and everybody will be asking for what either he does not deserve or taking what he is not supposed to take. So for me, for the first time, we have so much money into football for the World Cup. So the money well, that the federal government wants to me, give to finally, the World Cup, even if it's available, 
Well, should be finance, free somewhere. Uh, 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 Gara, um, well, the federal government is giving that amount of money. Ex International, backed by the sports ministry, are also looking to raise 1.2 billion. Uh, what, what are the former internationals raising money for as well? Um, how do we put this? How do we juxtapose this to the Super Rico's campaign? Those those ex international those ex international those ex international cannot raise any money. I can tell you. Because when you want to raise money, there's issue of credibility, there's issue of antecedents, there's issue of transparency. The only time we raised money so much for the World Cup was in 2010 when uh, former Governor of River State uh, Rotimi Amechi, the present Minister of Transport, headed the presidential committee to raise money for the World Cup. So much so that they even raised it with surplus. It was the surplus that they used now to even build the secretariat of the Dankaro Secretariat of the NFA, which they have refused to go in to occupy. So I do not think from the characters I saw that were asked to now uh, go and raise that billions, I don't think they can, achieve, they, can achieve, they, they can achieve that. You don't give somebody who is in need to go and raise money for you. It's not possible. So if we are going to uh, reorganize, there is nothing wrong in raising money. But who is the convening authority of that? The NFA are the ones who have been looking for money on their own so far, then these ex-internationals, I understand, were convened from a di different source entirely. So it's a confusion. You cannot, you, we're all going to the same source. So, so, so we should avoid a situation whereby people will now suffer from donor fatigue. The all same right. international are going to the same direction. The yeah. NFA are going to the same direction. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Gara. So who wins today's, tonight's match, Nigeria or Serbia? You know, I, I, I said to you earlier, I don't like to predict but things that I don't have control over. All right, but, thank uh, you so much. We'll leave I it believe at that. We'll leave it at that since you can't predict it. But then the Super Eagles will take on Serbia tonight. That's a former board member of the Nigeria Football Federation, uh, Ahmed Shwaibu Gara Gombede telling us about the Super Eagles preparation. <laughs>